Coach, just overall in offensive evaluation after Saturday, you guys go into a really hostile environment and you guys play well in the second half but get off to another slow start. What have you seen so far now that you've had a little bit of time to go back and look at the film? Uh, you know, first six plays drive, run down the field, you know, have a, uh, you know, a, a, a negative run, um, you know, and kind of put us in a third and long situation. Um, ended up having to punt the football there. So even on, you know, from the very first drive, you know, I mean, just – Negative plays, um, you know, lack of explosives in a run game, you know, that was a big deal. Um, and lack of efficiency in a run game, you know, because obviously from a just a first down efficiency standpoint, you know, you always want to be somewhere around 50% for the game. Um, and that was kind of our lowest number of the year. I think we were like 38, 39%. So um, got to be a little bit better, you know, on early downs. Um, you know, and then we, we, we got to finish drives in the, in the score zone. You know, and to me, that's when you when you go back and you watch it, because um, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the, the game is is truly about two really critical moments. You know, and and um, you know the game started poor. Um, you know, but we've got a fourth and one at midfield. Um, you know, we got to teed up. Feel like we're gonna go get this first down, and we're gonna have a chance to make it a one possession game, and and we, and we jump offside. Um, and then we've got another chance to make it a one possession game with 14 minutes left in the game, and we we don't finish in the paint. You know, and, and everybody in this room knows about this team. If we can make that thing a one-possession game and make it fun for the last five minutes, we're going to have a chance to win a game. You know, and our kids know that, and our kids believe that. You know, and so in those two really critical junctures of the game, like any time you play a good football team and like any time it's big-time football, it's going to be five, six, seven, eight plays. They're going to be unbelievably critical, and, and you you got to make more than your half. You know, we've made those in those first three games. You know, we didn't yesterday and or Saturday. Um, and that's kind of the result that we got. It's kind of procedural, but I asked Connor this too. He's leading the nation in, in pass attempts per game right now. Uh, is there anything you do as a coach basically to just help him maintain his arm and his shoulder? I know that whole body, he's got to do stuff just to deal with the wear and tear of Big Ten football. But with, with his arm and his shoulder specifically when he's using it so much on Saturday, and I imagine 66 attempts at Cincinnati is maybe the high end, but you guys want to play fast and yeah. Well, well. And there's there's a couple things that from an arm care standpoint, you know, obviously Coach Wellman does an incredible job with our guys. You know, that's going to be his body armor, that's going to be his rotational strength and rotational force, that's going to be his body weight. You know, and so first and foremost, Coach Wellman does a phenomenal job making sure those guys' bodies are prepared to play. Um, for us on the football side, you know, it's a Everyday arm care, pre-practice, everyday arm care, post-practice, you know, from a, you know, the same warm-up procedure that we use every single day um, to how we handle ourselves post-practice. Um, and we try to be really mindful of the amount of balls that are thrown in practice. You know, there's certain periods of the day in special teams where when we're doing individual pocket management stuff, uh, pocket awareness, evasions, where we're purposefully not throwing for certain periods of the day just to give those guys a little bit of relief. Um, but for the really good ones, the ball don't get real heavy. You know, and that goes for quarterbacks, tailbacks, wideouts, you know, and so. Um, but, no, definitely on the high side. You know, I think a lot of that had to do with, you know, how we were running the football earlier in the game and the fact that we were down two or three possessions for the majority of the second half. I, I can promise you we did not plan on going out there throwing it that many times. Just, uh, well, through, through four games, uh, what's your just evaluation about how this team handles playing with your tempo? Uh, what do you do? I guess do you think it's a good tempo team at this point and what makes – the tempo continue to be valuable? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, well, from a value standpoint, I mean, you, you look at the comfortability that we have and in the half and in the game, you know, from a two-minute standpoint, Saturday notwithstanding, you know, on the sack fumble, but we've we've won some games or put ourselves in a position to win some games because that's kind of what we do from a, you know, comfortability standpoint. Um, you know, you look at some of the scores that we've had, you know, our you know, the first touchdown against Cincinnati, they're not lined up at all. we got a wide-open guy. Um, we've had, you know, the first explosive of the season on a third and 16. Illinois is not lined up. You know, we get a, you know, 50-yard chunk. So, um, you know, it, it's been incredibly value to us, or valuable to us. Um, I think that we're playing plenty fast. Um, I think now the challenge for us is just the, the execution's got to match the pace, you know, because we've done a great job pressuring defenses. We just got to make sure that the execution picks up as well. And, you know, where it really shows up is in a run game and in pass protection, simply because you've got to get comfortable with the fact that they're not going to be lined up correctly a lot of the time. You know, and that's just part of the deal. Um, and as our guys grow and mature, we'll get continue to get better and better. Coach, uh, curious about Josh Henderson. Um, 
how would you describe him as a person? And I mean, is there anything that just comes to mind that uh, you can recall that speaks to who he is? Yeah, I mean, dude, everybody that has surrounded him in his life is a really, really, I mean, two wonderful parents. Okay, Todd Smith is high school football coach at the Hunt School in Princeton. Unbelievable guy, you know. And so he's been raised in his home and outside of his home within the game of football by great people, you know. And, and everybody that's ever been around him, whether it was head high school football coach, whether it was Coach Smith at the Hunt School, whether it was even, the, you know, Coach Longo and those guys that coached him in Carolina that we have relationships with. I mean, everybody just raved about what type of kid he is. And like a broken record. The kids that want to come to a place like this and play for a man like Tom Allen, they're usually really good people, you know. And so he's a great kid. He's a worker, very conscientious. Um, he's a, you know, very detail oriented. You know, pass protection is important to him. Just doing everything the right way, from how he prepares, how he practices, you know, to how he performs. And then on top of that, he's done a great job on game day, you know. And he he's been a really valuable player for us. Coach, when you, when you look at some of the slower starts the, that the offense has had early in the games, how much of that do you think is on the game plans that, that have had, you guys have had coming into the games versus just mistakes or little things that are happening actually out on the field? That's a wonderful question. Is it the kid's fault or is it my fault? That's a great question. Okay. It's always my fault. Okay. It's our fault. You know, and everybody in this building, we all have a role to play. I got to call the better ones. Obviously, I got to make sure I call the good ones, not the bad ones. Um, I think every offensive coordinator that's ever coached this game, you know, try to make sure you don't call any of the bad ones, just call the good ones. Um, but no, we've all got to be better, you know, and, and, you know, whether it be execution detail, whether it be right play, wrong look, whether it be, you know, lose on an individualist, I mean, whatever it may be. We, we've had every ill of football early in the game, but that's on all of us. It's on me, it's on our coaching staff, it's on our players, that's on everybody. And that's the one great thing about this group is they're incredibly self-critical, but never to a fault. They're going to do everything they can to improve and move forward and make sure that every time we step out there, that every Saturday that we go, that we're the best version of us. Hey, Coach, just wanted to get your thoughts. The offensive line has had some issues. What do you need to do? What do they need to do? to have the impact you need for this team to be a bull team this season? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a fantastic question. Um, number one, I mean, we, we've we got to make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can to have our best five guys out there, you know, and, and whether that be having to move guys around or do whatever we need to do. Um, and Coach Allen alluded to that earlier, you know, and I think that's appropriate. Um, number two, those guys in certain situations have to be better. We got to, you know, win some one on ones. Um, we got to be a little more assignment sound. Now we've played three really, really, really good defenses between Western Kentucky, Cincinnati, and Illinois. You know, and all three of them also are very exotic. You know, which which poses problems. Um, you know, and there's got to be a little bit more consistency there. And then I've got to do my part, and I've got to help not only protect Connor, but I've got to help protect our football team as well. And so it's just all of us coming together, you know, and being mindful of what our strengths are, what we're good at, what we're not good at, and making sure that, that myself and our offensive staff, um, that we're putting our players in the best possible situation to be as successful as we can be. I want to go back to what you said when we were talking about tempo, uh, when you mentioned that your team's got to get used to the fact that the other team's not going to be lined up right. Mm -hmm. How is that a challenge for the offense? It sounds like it is. It sounds like that's what you're saying is that, that those guys not being in the sp spot where you expect them to be is a challenge on offense as much as on defense. How so and how does that what, – what's that adjustment like? What do you have to do to figure out what to do when they're not where you expect them to be? Uh, you know, it's the same th – I mean, the good news is – or I won't say the good news. Um, you know, the, the truth of it is is that since I was a player – you know, when I was a really, really, really bad football player at Middle Tennessee State University, and we were one of the few people going really fast, um, you know, it's just it's something that you deal with. You know, now, back then, it was even worse because defenses were still attempting to huddle. So there would be times where all 11 players would be inside the hash marks when you would snap the ball. Um, and so uh, through the evolution of it, you know, defenses are doing a better job. Um, but it's just, again, when, when you play the way that we play, and this is really specific to the quarterback and it starts to permeate and bleed into other positions, is not everything is going to be black and white. 
you know, and it's the ability, you know, just through system knowledge and system fit and truly understanding what we're trying to get done, the ability to manage the gray that's created with how we play, you know, that that's the skill, you know, and that's really, really important for the quarterback, you know, whether it be RPO decision making, um, you know, drop back decision making, you know, like, for example, the touchdown we threw to Josh, they're not lined up at all. They don't have anybody out there. You know, now he's got to drive his eyes outside to his high low, make a choice, you know, and they're uncovered and there's a little bit of open grass there and he puts it on them and we score. You know, and I've also seen that throughout my career go the other way and not be good, you know. And so, again, it's just the skill of managing the created gray, you know, is where as this thing goes is where we'll continue to get better and better.